A situation junglers find themselves in quite frequently is when your laners lose, and not just lose, get absolutely obliterated. I'm sure you've all had situations like this where you had 15 kills, your whole team were dying and playing around with dragons, and you're basically saving the Nexus turret from falling, yes? However, even if top, mid, and bottom lane are all losing, as long as you manage to still be the better jungler and your decision making is matched by only the gods of jungling themselves, I can show you how to carry this game. And as we start off with the first clears here, we're going to look at a few things, four things specifically, that overarch the ability to carry these kinds of games. And you do have to understand that you're not going to start the game assuming that you're going to be in a losing lane situation. All you know is that the enemy Javan gets a leashless start, you're an Echo, and Echo is the king of counter ganks, and obviously red side quadrant ganks. We go for said gank in the bottom lane. We are able to get something back, however our bottom lane die. And then of course the pike drags us out, the Javan cuts his clear short, rotates, and takes us out. So now you're one one zero. you extrapolate all the possibilities of the game, and you see that your solo laners are gonna run it down. You see that you have a massive gold deficit. This is what's gonna allow you to carry these situations. But obviously the fundamentals of jungle carry true no matter what kind of game stage you're in and for that we have rakayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content seen nowhere else as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at it's converting junglers to gold, to emerald, to diamond, to master plus. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle div every game you play, click the link below or head to rakayu.gg. Now the echo is going to go to the the top side here do walls into the scuttle then blue grub the javan obviously has control over his bottom side however in these situations i usually like to advocate for swapping your sequencing direction if you start on the bottom side you know red crocs raptors walls grump blue you're pathing from bottom to top and now if you do your stuff in the top lane you know you reset you're gonna be doing the same thing again right taking the respawn of the crocs raptors walls and grump pathing bottom to top in games like this when things have gone badly early it's quite good to swap your sequencing so doing the scuttle crab, then blue grump walls into Raptor's Krugs forces you to go now top down and gives a little bit of a jungle difference metric to the enemy jungler who won't be able to track you properly. So one of the things that are very important for an echo or any jungler in these scenarios to get back into the game is being undetected. When your laners are simply going to be smooth braining their existence and the enemy jungler really doesn't have to do much other than shut you down, it's very important that you know your own champion limits, you know how to juggle with fog of war, you have to get resources when behind through jungle tracking or recognizing lane states, and you have to have patience. But also the chances that you could see for a free engage and a kill, you have to take them. However, those will be few and far between. As you see here, we avoid the scuttle crab vision through nice E usage. We go to the bottom lane. We're not able to get anything, but we can shove out with the Varus. Valuable golden experience for both of us. Varus overstays and dies. Because they're losing lanes, he's gonna do that. All you can do now is do Krugs and go back to base. So understanding that restraint with when you're gonna go in and exploit the advantages given to you is very crucial. And I will highlight these for you. But it does mean my tiny fisting smiting buddies that this in fact will be a slower early game. So let's speed it up. You're outside in rule, that means taking the thing furthest from your jungle before you get killed, which in this case is a scuttle crab, and then falling back to your camps is the best way to go forward. So you take the scuttle crab. Javan goes ahead and tries to gank top lane. Riven does it by herself because losing lanes. This might look like a doomed scenario, but just like this iron coaching I had early in the day where a level 6 Nocturne was still able to kill a level 9 Graves in the mid lane, even down levels, certain champions, knowing your limits, means you can actually turn bad situations into, you know, less bad situations. The Riven dies. Nice little gank on her overpush and her overconfidence. An important use of smite, an important W, and an important wave hold because your set has no TP. And the Java now couldn't really do much there because his tracking was off, because you reversed your sequencing from bottom to top to top to bottom. Very important. And yes, you probably didn't recognize you did that. And when you pay attention to using Fog of War tricks to be undetected and to mislead enemy junglers, rule number one of being a jungle diff master plus player is to do those things, the Javan just walked across the Scryer's Bloom. You see him? That means what? Free Grom, free Wolves, and you can relax a little bit while you control your own jungle. Remember, your ganking angles, your counter jungling angles, develop what we call umbrella jungling. Well, what I call umbrella jungling or have done for many years. It's basically where the map looks like an umbrella and you have these scenarios where you're always going to be doing lane ganks, counter ganks, defending turrets, looking for a pass through the jungle that aren't warded, having good defensive vision. If you can set your map up like this, look at the pathways, look at the possibilities. We just saw Echo use one on the Riven. And then because we are tracking and we are a better jungler, we know the enemy jungler would have gone back to his red side quadrant to take those camps. 
And in an amazing twist of fate, even though there's no twisted fate in this game, we have some prior in the lanes to sneak a herald. I call this a loop path because you kind of go out of the base, you loop and do stuff, you take some camps, and then you loop back to where you started. And that means the enemy jungle is not going to expect you to do that. And again, another misdirection nets you an objective, which will eventually net you bounties, which will eventually be the thing that means your team are down 8,000 gold anyway. But... You are strong, you will have more jungle gold than the enemy jungler, and yes, jungle gold is not the same as a regular gold. It's a special gold. It smells of the difference. But when there's a global announcement telling everybody that you have slain that which cannot be named, because those could be grubs if you're watching this in season 14, and yes, everything I'm saying here will still be true, that means the enemy jungler has a bit of a temper advantage on astro fisting your bottom lane to another dimension. I believe it's a dimension where neurons don't exist, but you can't quote me on that. And the importance of you having your gold and experience lead over the enemy jungler can never be overstated because one, in a losing game set with truly no hope in hell, you gotta do Krugs, Red, Raptors, and just go to the top side and maybe counter jungle, right? That's what we're thinking about doing, especially when they're going from the bottom lane all the way to the dragon. But you're an Echo, but you are a Hecarim, but you're something that knows they can go over the wall, use their lead, put on your purple pants, turn green, and literally posture in such a way that you puff out your chest and you say, no, this is my dragon. One, I'm going to steal it. Two, I'm ahead of you, so you have to leave because I can kill your whole team in isolation. And three, we are winning this game. Now, obviously, no one on the enemy team believes that, but that kind of confidence does inspire. Never mind, your team are still linting. But because of the constant experience and gold lead that he has on the job, and he can force these scenarios more than those junglers that don't have those advantages. He also goes to a place he knows he can go in and go out without dying. You must not die, you must not give shutdowns, you have to play restrained. You have to know when to pick your advantages. How do we know this for Kayu? Well, I showed you. The Riven overcommitted, but I know my champion, and you have to know your champions, so I can kill her level 5 to level 7, doesn't matter. I know I have an advantage over the Joven and can outsmite him, and I can leave the pit if necessary with my ult, so I'm gonna go ahead and steal it. But I'm not chasing into the jungle, I'm not forcing fights with super fed members, and that's all I'm doing. I'm removing the power of the Joven and making sure that I at least win my matchup in the jungle. Pull back to your red, your raptors. Remember the umbrella jungling? Yeah, we don't know exactly what the Javan's gonna try and do, so after going back to base and taking out blue side quadrant, we do a nice little cheeky lane gank. If he doesn't show up or he shows up in the bottom lane, we get a regular gank and we can activate the Herald to get some plates for ourselves and a chosen laner. Very important. Now, if you can take some of his camps and get out, do it. Otherwise, don't overcommit and stay. You see that Tristana dies again. Now she's 150. Your Varus is 044. You have to hold the turret wave in the mid lane, that's very, very good. There is a downside to activating the Herald here, though you elevated the game state. They now have a Riven, who's a little bit unlocked. They now have a Riven with no turret, who can force Set to overcommit to get resources and Jarvan can abuse. Let's see what happens. Well, we found our Quadrant again on the bottom side, and our ADC and bottom lane die again to the Jarvan. Nautilus is getting some kills, you know, but it's on a Nautilus. And the Pike is even more fed. Sivir's still gonna be Sivir, and Akali's still Akali, and Jarvan doesn't really have to think. Now, you know how I mentioned, you know, don't die, don't give shutdown gold, just maintain your advantage. Playing vision is a noble cause and one we must do, but try not to die over it, yeah? Make sure you're positioning, understanding your mechanical situation. How do I get out of this? I've overcommitted, I've overpushed, I've overgreeded for a ward. What can I use in my kit to escape and not die? That's your mechanical knowledge. Has to come through at some point, I'm sorry. There's only so much you can do with theory and jungle decision making. All I'll say is ideally, don't even go for this vision clearance, but if you do, know how to get out with your chosen champion. If you're playing something that can't get out, don't go for it. Oh look, set overcommitted on the top side, like I said, and die to the Akali. So hey, elevating the game state gets you fed, but it does come at a cost when your laners are inting this badly. Now in game, you don't truly know the gold advantage or disadvantage. So you think, look, we've got a bit of a position here. Can we do this quick dragon and get out? You're able to kill the Javan, but the problem is, no one else is remotely close to you. So again, try your best to force the fight knowing that you can do good things, but very clearly when you cannot, retract yourself from the scenario and focus on something else. Can I take my own camps? Can I push a wave? Can I do some counter jungling? Is there another objective I can take? Look to make plays and get income from somewhere else on the map rather than overtly committing yourself to death for a dragon that truly doesn't matter that much. And remember, if you scale and your team scales and you're confident in your 1v9 and 2v8 ability, depending on who else is useful on your team, giving them a nice soul leads to an early Elder Dragon. So maybe that's a play you want to angle into and lean into, especially if you still have a huge lead and can easily outsmite. Those are games that can be won with a little bit of restraint right now and a lot of glory later on. However, as you can see, they don't do the dragon because they don't have a smite and they're worried about you. 
Meanwhile, the Echo kills the Akali with a little bit of the help from his team. Hey, they did something and we can go and do the Herald. Then our team decides to be caught out in the mid lane. Surprise, surprise. Yes, in a Giga losing game state, that means you should probably leave the Herald and see if you can do something. This is only because you know you can at least kill one or two and get out. Use your ult, use your positioning, you're an assassin. You have the ability to do this. You're a fighter. You have the ability to do this. Only tanks will have a rougher time in these scenarios, but you can still 1v9 with the right heal. You soloing a herald is not going to help, yes? Mage is same thing. We do a little bit of everything. We're squishy, but we can posture and position very, very well. Get a kill or two. Leave. Live. Control your camps. Make sure no counter jungling can happen. And as I say that, right on point, the echo's like, but my red buff looks like it might be stolen. I want to contest this. This is a good call because the tempo of the bottom lane here is out of whack with the rest of their team. Why? Because you killed the Javan. The Javan is not going to be in a position to actually help invade and deal with this, right? Which means you have numbers advantage on your side of the map with the dragon available. And the most important thing mechanically here, once he knows he's blown his load and he's got nothing left, he doesn't go back in. He doesn't think, hey, maybe I should try and get these kills for myself. He says, look, I've done everything I can. They're super low. I hope you can clean this up, team. Which, of course, they do. And then Nautilus over commits and dies. And Akali rotates and Javan rotates. We get another kill. And again, you live by the slice of pizza that is too thin to be called a pizza. And you go to the top side and secure kill those camps. Do you see the way he's pathing? Do you see the way he's moving? We have time to go and take some camps and heal up and take a Skull crap to prevent a free Herald take. We take it. They're doing something else, I'm gaining something else. I'm not letting my team's inting and gold deficit impact my mental. Through the plays of the Echo, his team are picking up scraps here and there. That's most important, yes? Unfortunately, there comes a point in the game where there's only so much camps you can farm because you're taking them so quickly. There's only so much rage splitting a Tristana can do before she's basically definitely useless. And the Echo does in fact give a shutdown. And then, because the enemy team has a small tempo advantage because you're dead and no one else on your team can do anything, they get a few more kills, a few more shoves here and there, and then they go to a Baron, which they're unable to get. Your team rotates over is about to do something. Akali rotates over and does some more stuff. Basically, it's just a fiesta of unskilled nonsense. But look at the overarching jungle versus jungle matchup. We're up 60 plus CS. Yeah, his KP is higher, but you know, look at what we're dealing with. Keeping yourself on a gold advantage over the enemy jungle and a threat to the enemy team over objectives is what allows them to freak out whenever there's such a play that needs to be made. The small shutdowns you give your team by playing perfectly not dying allows them to get more gold and be brought up just a little bit. You are basically dragging them by their screaming deaths to the next phase of the game where you can at least try and 1v9 for them. And then it comes 25, 30, 35 minutes and people say to me, you know, what's the source? What's the secret juice that allows me to carry these Denobos? That's a Dodo crossed with a Bonobo because these are species I've never seen before. Trust me in these games. And it's really simple. It's you have to use the gold lead you have, the mechanical prowess you know, and the fog of war abuse you also understand to actually kill the enemy, to actually do damage, to actually be able to win a scenario. If you physically cannot do that with your champion, or I guess magically cannot do that with your champion, pick another champion. At 25-30 minutes, you are also Astro Light years away. It's also going to be one of those games where you might just think, you know what, I don't think we win anyway. But if you are confident in your jungling and you do what the Echo just did into a Baron, and again, I will leave the match history link below so you can see the gold graph. There's no bullshit here. All 100%, 7,198 gold behind at one point. This is the swing. It's a big one. And it's a big one because he traded the Baron, as you would have seen, for the inhib. That's a worthy trade when you're losing. So understand that little secret source, maybe. It's okay to trade an inhib for the fact that you now have the Baron to be able to deal with those supers. So you can actually deal with the next dragon. But you know what? I'm okay giving them that dragon too. I want to use the Baron to push up the map. They get vision control so I can make another pick. So I can win another fight with the element of surprise. Guerrilla warfare. Go in, my friends. Make the flank. Make the position. Make the mechanical outplay. Again, use your PvP. Use your godlike fedness to actually impact the world in a real way. It's like saying, hey, I'm a jungler. Why am I laying as inting when you have 0, 0, 0 in 25 minutes every single game? You have no impact. Talking does nothing. Doing does something. Something, something, Batman, it's not what I say, but it's what I do that defines me. Junglers, adopt that mantra, yes? And what I love about this game is we're only halfway through the kills for the Echo. That's correct. Once you've taken an inhib from these kills, kill conversion ratio, take objective from kills you get, pull back, take his Raptors, take his Scuttle Crab, take your whole blue side, they will chase you down. You keep taking it, you play with them, you don't fight them, you just waste your time. You're getting the gold, the experience, you hold the top wave. You are juiced, go back to base, buy a death cap. The enemy thinks, hey, Echo's not there, let's fight. You say, but I'm Echo. You get there quickly with home guards. You see Riven splitting on the top side. 
you kill her too. You repeat and you trust the process, unlike most 76ers fans, in this case we can actually do that and see victory. And if you think I meant victory in the regular season, you're kidding yourselves and it's been way too long since you actually won anything. Take the responsibility of being Maximus, of being the gladiator. You see your Nexus about to explode due to minions. Don't do the dragon and think you're needed for that. If you lose a dragon, you lose a dragon, because losing your Nexus means there are no more dragons. So please go back to base and hold. You can press the situation, you can see them falling apart, trying very desperately to get into your base to end. Riven is overcommitting with the Hellbreaker, but you are a strong Echo and you can do a lot of damage. She dies. Now, this is the most important thing, right? Now, this might happen at 20 minutes, 35, 40. This is one of the most important things that you can think about in losing game states, and that's finding a small window to trap. Scan, sit in the bush, wait for someone to come out and kill them. That singular pick in a losing situation, when you've been struggling to hold onto your own base for the past 15 minutes, will allow you breathing space for a Baron. And if you can get it before Baron or an Elder Dragon, obviously those are win cons, that's the goal. Because at 30 plus minutes, when you get that singular Baron and your inhibs have respawned because you held by yourself or your team were doing who knows what, that's when it comes down to the final team fight, the final macro call, Pay attention to the split, but as long as you can face your team and say, listen guys, this is it, let's go end the game, I want 20 kills, you will be able to do it. But you have to put on the aggressive pants, you have to be on the 1v9 jungler mentality. If you don't have that mentality, you'll never ever win and climb because you won't be a millionaire in LP mindset. I'm sure that's a cringe way to put it and also make fun of the millionaire mindset coaches on YouTube, but you do understand what I mean, correct? Because if you do, you're ready to become an absolute monster jungler. Click the video to take your next steps.